Uh, welcome to another episode of On All Fours. I'm Ryan Manchester, and I've got... Father Steve Manchester. Yeah, so today we're going to do a couple different things. We're going to call some contractors out. We're going to do some educating, and we're just going to kind of give everybody just a kind of a little bit of an overview that I think that we maybe don't do a good job enough of touching on. And I just think that it's one of those things that's out of everybody's typical behavior. When you walk into a project, you're in an owner facility, or you're just maybe even at, at an architecture office, and you just say, man, there's a lot of opportunity that I think we miss out on. And so I think with, today we're going to take that time. We're and just going vertical. Of, we're going to go vertical. We're going to try to, you know, maybe educate, uh, maybe re-educate or, you know, help people just kind of rediscover um, an area that um, we feel like is an underutilized area that, that we've got a lot of products. I guess we as being Sika have a lot of products that they're going to provide, you know, quite right. a bit of value to to not only the, you know, the people that we sell those products to, but but obviously the um, the owners or the end users. Right. So uh, I, I kind of call it the floor, the floors are kind of the discovered country and the walls and the ceilings are the undiscovered country, meaning that there's all this opportunity all around us. And there's you know, these all these projects that have the opportunities for seamless flooring is, yeah, that's obvious. But almost every seamless flooring job has some potential for us for a seamless wall or a seamless ceiling coating system. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, for at least for me, when I, you know, kind of got into the business, I think, you know, I always thought of a, of, of a coating that went, you know, vertically or like you're talking about ceiling or, or, a, or a wall system. Yeah, you're talking typical, you know, latex paint, you know, single component, go to Home Depot, Lowe's. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that is the majority of the market, right? I mean, if you looked at all the walls versus, you know, the, yeah. the floors, I think the majority well, of the, uh, you know, what, what we get into at least is, yeah. I would say, just typical paint. Yeah. But I think there are, you know, there are some opportunities to really find, you know, people that obviously need, you know, high performance wall system or that, you know, it's a scope that's just not necessarily well, recognized well, by well a lot of times if you've needs. got if you if somebody's going to spend the money for a seamless floor they obviously have the need for wash down or it needs to be very sanitary or there's some there's some need to, to have a floor and i think that the the wall systems are one of those things where as a floor guy we kind of have a floor mindset where we think well i don't i really don't think about the walls and ceilings that's like right. a painter right uh, well the truth of the matter is our a goal today is kind of just to get people to say let's think differently let's think of ceilings walls and floors as one seamless envelope of protection and also maybe from a contractor's perspective a, a, a whole new opportunity to to either grow your business or to provide more value to a general contractor or owner Right, right. I, um, I I think the the best thing to do, I mean, I think is, it's, you know, one thing that we probably haven't done enough is just run through some of the different types of products. And I mean, a lot of the stuff that we are doing on the on floors is going to be very similar to where we're going to be putting up a wall. I mean, even same chemistry, a same ge- generic type of chemistry. Yeah, and maybe, yeah. you know, maybe the the application methods obviously a little bit yeah. different, but I think uh, I think it's good to talk a little bit about start. I mean, we kind of had a little bit of a run through that we wanted to go over and that might change a little bit, but I definitely think just talking over some of the the resin families right or just product families that we see in our wall systems and then talk about you know, maybe just kind of group those products into you know some you know major systems right and talk systems and then talk app you know application and then the areas True. that they're going in and then kind of well i mean most everybody obviously everybody's familiar with latex paint but as you start really moving up the 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 food chain if you will in terms of its durability its chemical resistance its impact resistance you know you start getting into the the normal you know high performance resin families which are epoxies uh, you get into modified acrylics you get into uh, you know your typical urethane coatings which are have a tendency to be more of a a finish coat because of their uh, they have obviously excellent chemical resistance but they have great color stability and i think of all of us is, who's been involved in wall systems and thinking oh a white epoxy on the wall well that's going to turn yellow well that's why you have to put a urethane finish or some sort of more color stable finish on top of that and obviously within those families you've got glossy systems matte finish systems semi-gloss all kinds of finishes as well yeah and i i think you know something uh, too that you know we we've done uh, you know quite a bit of is uh decorative i mean that's not just the white yeah. I mean, there's, you could do the, the brown, you know, walls b- behind yeah. us or, or even doing a flake system. Yeah, you can uh, do, I mean, in fact, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of growth in decorative micro flake or smaller flake that's blown into a wall system where you really do have a, a whole different type of look. And so, 
you know, there's really the sky's the limit in terms of what you can do with these wall systems. It's just a matter of really just trying to, to, to really change the way you look at walls, the way you think about walls, and hopefully be in a position where you can put a system in that's going to give somebody a lot of protection. And really be, the key word here is, is really seamless, right? There's right. lots of other products on the market. There's t- tile walls, there's block Polymer, walls, there's, yeah, there's, there's, yeah. there's, there's, you know, uh, yeah, fiberglass which, which wall all, systems. Which yeah. all do their job you know, all do their job, you know, um, to a degree. But I mean, I, I think the coding and what you talked about seamless is we, we talk about seamless floors and just so the integration, you know, is, is a key component of why we would be taking a coating, you know, up a wall up or, a wall. or up right. into a ceiling. Right. So, um, but there's, again, the, going back to chemistries, there's, there's, there's a lot, there, of, there's options. A lot yeah. of options out there. Some are more, some can be sprayed, some can only be rolled, some can be sprayed and rolled. So obviously there's, there's a right. lot of chemistry and, and just, just like how we choose the right flooring for the right environment, the same, same thing we do for the, for the right. wall system. Right. Right. And then, you know, devil's in the details as far as those, those transitions and exactly. making sure that things do what they're supposed to do. Um, so we kind of hit on the the resin or the different materials that we use to, to make up most of our wall systems. Um, and then again, let's just talk a little bit about, you know, why we why we use wall systems. I mean, I think that the, the obvious is very similar. Why, why do we use, you know, floor systems? I mean, we're all, we're in the business of protecting environments and then the people that work exactly. in those environments by, by our wall systems. But specifically, you know why would why would people be choosing a wall system uh, or a high call let's call it a high performance coating system over just your standard regular latex or 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 an alternative well obviously most of those systems wouldn't probably survive a week uh, the lower yeah, yeah. because these are these could be environments that are washed down duty these are environments that could have like if you're in a laboratory or if you're in some sort of pharmaceutical environment you know they could be spraying the walls down with uh, with bleach or or a vaporized uh, hydrogen peroxide i mean those are pretty aggressive chemicals so right. the the truth of the matter is you know as we come into a more more and more sanitary environments especially in food processing right? Right. Whereas food, food bio, yeah, the, cause, yeah, well, people are in food processing. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's going to be washed down. But now they're they're almost at some level where you're at pharmaceutical levels at the at the food right. processing. Right. So you don't want any seams. You don't want any ledges. You don't want any anywhere for food or, or bacteria or water or anything could could collect. Right. So that's the that's where you right. get again. And true very, seamless. And I and I um, I was about to say, you know, the really almost equal the the reasons that people choose you know floor systems is why they're choosing a wall system i mean exactly. other than texture but but texture though um could you know could make its way into a wall system by trying to get rid of block or right. grout lines or making you know dead flat smooth i mean again you know cleanable surfaces high performance shock proof thermal impact i mean all those all things same everything everything but, on the floor applies to the, the walls and the ceilings right too. right and so and I always, you know, try to do my best to simplify, you know, um, you know what we do and how we do it and how we choose systems. But, um, you know, we've – so let's just recap real quick. So we've, we've talked about, um, you know, the environments in which these are going to go, and typically you're going to see them in, you know, in an environment uh, that's obviously going to have a lot of performance requirement, uh, primarily found in food and beverage facilities, hospitals, um, you know, pharma, biofarm, any, anything wet, too. right, right, yeah. right. The uh, wet, the wetter, the more likely we are going to have a an app, a really a, a strong application. Right. Um, so talked about you know uh, why we want to use a seamless wall system. You know where where to use them. Um, I, I guess something to talk a little bit about is um, we we all and I was previously saying that you know we always equate you know performance um by you know the, the physical thickness of of a system right, right? i mean that's not a hundred percent true but i mean if you had to simplify it typically when you build something up you typically get more performance out of it so i think this is a good segue into talking about um you know the different types of we kind of talked about products as far as acrylics and epoxies yeah, and no. modified urethanes but now moving into when when what, we have somebody that's either looking at specifying a, a wall system or you have a contractor let's talk a little bit about taking those products and turning them into systems because that's what really people care about yeah. right and so 
well, let's talk about that real quick, and then I think that would be a good well, way and, to jump and, into this, the, the, the substrates. Yeah, and, exactly, and because a lot of times the that. system that you choose is in direct relation to the substrate. Yeah, yeah, that's, because that's if true, you that's if true. because all pro, all systems are really meant for 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 certain environments, but there's so much variation in substrate. There's a lot more that sometimes goes into these wall coatings to be able to really adapt to the substrate that you're on. You could go from something that is as simple as as gyp board. Um, which obviously is is the most most maybe most common, but then you could go up the kind of the 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 food chain in terms of its impact resistance, its moisture resistance, and its durability. So you go from something like gypboard to a maybe a, a durock or a, or some sort of right. cement board, yeah. or go to a moisture resistant green board, and then you as you move up, you could even have a cast in place concrete wall. Right. So then you got a cast in place concrete wall. What do you do with that wall? You have some bug holes in there, so now we got to fix the bug holes. So now, yeah. now we've got to specify a system that takes into account fixing those bug holes. Right. And then, last but not least, as you as you move into maybe more on the common end, is is a is a is a block wall. Right. So you've yeah. got a a block wall, haydite block wall, some sort of block wall system, which is inherently very porous. It's got a lot of texture, and then you've got grout lines or joint lines. Right. Right, that that people either will, you know, they won't, typically we're trying to make that stuff disappear because right. you know they had block or they want to turn yeah. you know something into a more of a cleanable surface. So or I th- just so I think what we're saying is that a lot of the final finish coats can can really be the same across many substrates. Right. It's just the fact that when you get to to saying, okay, well, how do I treat that substrate in such a way where I don't see the substrate, or I don't see a seam, or I don't see the the points of the block, you, and, or, or you, what have you. And uh, I didn't even think about this when we were kind of you know talking about this earlier, but the when we talk about seams and we talk about you know obviously we've got you know. Uh, products like a like an epoxy and it's just some of the the horse you know, i guess horror stories or whatever you want to call it you know talking about when you don't pick the right substrate maybe you picked you know maybe that's the right wall system but not but maybe it wasn't the right, right drops substrate. substrate exactly um, talk a little i think that's a good thing to hit on is um talk a little bit about like you know hey if you could remember one thing, remember this thing when you when you walk into a facility is if I ask this one thing, I know that, you know, I've I've covered myself as far as, you know, something bad happening. And we're talking about things coming off the wall that are not supposed to. Um, exactly. In fact, I, I remember one time going on a, on a project where we had a we had a block wall system and a big, long hallway light at the end of the hallway. Um, the the block wall did not really have any filler in it at all. It just had maybe a 20 or 30 mil system on it. Did a good job. Right. But it, it showed every little imperfection. So the expectation of the customer was, hey, I, I didn't even really expect to see any of the block in here. Right. None of the points. Uh, I want this totally glass smooth. Well, wow, we we gotta as we work with architects, as we work with people, we're gonna have to ma- marry that expectation about what how how nice do you really want this to look? And depending on the substrate, we're gonna vary the recommendation on not only surface prep, but how we're gonna fill that and how we're gonna give somebody that final finished look. And is there any limitations on on substrates as far as the actual epoxy maybe um, adhering and and curing to where it could actually uh, hurt the oh, actual yeah. substrate? Exactly. In fact, there are so many times I can tell you that we've I've been on jobs where we have had a a standard gyp board wall and they've used a very cheap you know gypsum based mud to fill the seams and cracks and the wall looks great before you coat it right nice and smooth sanded nicely and then we're coming back and putting really strongly curing epoxy primers and systems that have really strong tensile strength and as that as you apply over those that kind of really poor tensile strength gyp um, mud it literally just shrinks and pulls the mud right off right, the wall right. and they're like wants, oh, whoa what, yes, what happened here yeah. well it's another one of those things where you've got to marry the substrate with the final finished product so yeah i mean the devil's always in the details but the the reality is i probably uh, and i think you're the same way you know as we're talking to architects specifically you know that's really the first question that i ask him is tell What's me about your... all the different substrates that you're going to have because you know 
you could have you could be on a job you get yeah. three different substrates yeah. so you need to make sure that, that how we treat the the substrate how we prime it how we fill it and then how we finally put our final finish coats on it's it's you know not all it's not all made the same yeah and and you know Sika um has done a great job too of building you know and and what we try to do with all of our products is you know put these in generalized systems again those are never de facto must be this way but at least we tr- you know what we try to do is give you options or standardize mm-hmm. those things we, we do have a standardized you know way of approaching uh wall systems um and and typically i think we work those you know down from you know hey let's give somebody a very cleanable chemical resistant wall system mm-hmm. and then we start to run into you know heavy impact and so i think maybe talking from what we would call maybe a a high build system to you know you could call it a reinforcing or flexible yeah yeah, all the way up to system and i and i think too i want to bring up um and i think we'll be okay on time here but i think there's a really good example of a recent uh project we were working on where we had a lot of variables as far as you know the the wall backing, um, you know negative pressure, vibration right. in the building. I think lots of flex in the wall. So let's so I I, I don't want to jump all the way to there, but let's just start with you know. Uh, yeah, let's go with the maybe four made the four I consider four groups of coding systems that you have. Literally right. for starting from the very in, bottom of the yeah, food in, chain. In uh, you know like like any um, like any company. I mean specifically Sika too. I mean we've got a, a huge you know our our bench of products is fairly deep, but I mean I think the biggest thing is you know. We've got a lot of prep um, material, block fillers, different injection gels, things that right. make. You, you have to have a broad product line to be able to to do what to do a really good job at a wall system. Right, I mean, because there's a, a lot, lot of these wall of, systems yeah, are, a, you're, you know, the thickness, I mean, things are going to telegraph. Yeah. If you don't have the proper, there are some people that are going to want a block wall almost plaster like. Well, and I, I mean, you look at you know how many times do you you know you've you fixed a crack in in your in your home. And you start to see that crack, you know, that same thing as, I mean, if you don't prep that well or have the right products, I mean, no matter how great that the, the, you know, the wall system is just not going to look that great. So, so most of our products, I would say, you know, not, not all of them, but, but the majority of our products are are spray applied yeah. um, and, and can be roll applied and can, too. Yeah, I mean, but I would say if, if really the, the best finished look and if you've got a big job and you're trying to do a lot of production, obviously a, a well, spray, it's like, it's like spray, it's yes, like a spray of your cabinets or yeah, spraying your exactly. cabinets. Exactly. A spray applied gonna, system yeah. is if you can do it, you will do it. But I will say that probably half of our jobs are, right. are just roll, roll on systems. Right, right. right. Which, um, which says a lot about products that you have to have a product that can be rollable, meaning that you got to be able to roll 10 or 20, 12 mils on the wall and let it hang versus coming back and spraying a system and being able to to make it work under both application right. scenarios right and you know i um i mean some of our wall systems i mean we put into where someone just meant i just need something that's better than just regular you know good old you know home depot bought store paint exactly and we've got a lot of you know single component you know water-based products um but you know they, they could be 15 mils ish you know maybe yeah. you know to, to 20 mils all the way up to what we we would call maybe more of a high build you know system up to you know right. 40 or 60 mils um again most of these systems all have the same finishes right, sometimes right, right but how do you how do you build the system out like you start at that maybe lower end system could be a you know maybe a 20 mil system overall right. over over jet board and then you make up to maybe you move up to someone that says man i still want a thin film system or relatively thin but i need to be impact resistant in that case you're going to use a you know fiber maybe a, a fiber or reinforced or in some cases a, a flexibilized fiber. epoxy right, right. so that be able to to take some vibration and some impact so and and i i guess the the thing too is sometimes you know when you start writing a spec or you start talking to people about all the steps i mean you know it's it's much different than putting down you know a a broadcasted system or even like a you know a quarter inch urethane system there's a lot of i mean when you start building or you get into more of these high performance systems i mean you could have you know between the prep and the block you could have eight different steps depending right. on how you're building a, a right a, a system so yeah. and and the cost you know obviously everybody always says well how much is that going to cost well well you know, the cost these... is a, well the you know the cost is relatively inexpensive compared to, to if you a floor but the 
but I think the the biggest impact is it's usually five x yeah. of what the actual floor area is, that, right? That's so, true. So the, anyway, the the reality is, if if you're going to spend the money for the floor, you know, you're probably going to spend, you know, you're probably going to be willing to spend the money for the for the walls and ceilings, right? So right. Um, but as 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 we were saying about kind of moving up the the uh, the performance wall, you know, the, the a lot of your cost gets it gets eaten up in how how much time and effort do I have to put into filling seams and joints right. and all that, and obviously as you get up to the higher end systems, which are you know you're doing block wall and you somebody has really high expectations about a level five finish on a on a block wall, or even more importantly, if you get up to like a, a Desco glass system, which is Typically, a fiberglass right. mat reinforce some uh, a wall yeah. or system. That is now you're talking about a serious wall system, and that is really um, that's really the the top end of the that's the Cadillac of, of wall systems. You know, those are for like a BSL four lab, or they're going to be for something that someone is really going to spend. They're going to spend fifteen dollars a foot to put in a, a high-end wall system like right. that. Great system, but you right. know, you're going you're gonna to definitely pay for so, it. So, I mean, I, I guess, uh, you know, broadly speaking, um, you know, and, and we're obviously not on the contracting side, but sometimes have a, you know, relatively co- close gauge on, on where some of the stuff, I mean, you know, the, the range could be anywhere, you know, low, low, mid, you know, five, six dollars a foot, all the way up to, I mean, what's the it's, most it's, you've it's, seen? It's, I've seen twenty dollar a foot right. foot jobs, right. and these are these are wall systems that have, the these are wall systems that have coved corners, right? Coved ceilings, uh, lots of detail and transition work around HEPA filters and lights and window sills and doors. Uh, there is some really fine work that goes on there, but it is also very labor intensive and it can be very costly. Beautiful work, right? Very stri- extremely functional, but you know, you, you're going to pay for it. Right. And, and I guess, you know, but, but what we've seen, um, is, you know, the alternative though, to, to get something that's going to perform that, that well, um, you know, the, the next closest thing you start to get into actually like pre-manufactured wall paneling systems, right. which I, you know, to, in all honesty are super impressive. Oh, and, they're and they, super they, nice. they serve, yeah. I think they serve a purpose, especially when you start talking about really, really aggressive performance requirements yeah. but i mean and those take sometimes they those play those take the place of the wall substrate oh yeah in, they in, be they become the wall right you're going so, direct to but a that's metal stud but that's 30 dollar a foot type plus stuff too, yeah. yeah so that's, but, but that again be serves its expensive. place but i think you know what Sweet, we nice what, stuff yeah yeah but i think we found that you know this this serves probably a broader niche yeah. especially for you know where, where we're you know operating and, and trying to tie that into an existing you know floor mm-hmm. project so i think the thing that we want people to really realize is that not all wall systems are created equal and the reality for that is and especially in the seamless is the first question we're going to focus on is substrate right the, we're always yeah. going to focus on the structure because invi- that's going to drive any, everything else well yeah i mean anytime you know, the first thing is like, where are we going? Who are we talking to? And then that obviously paints the picture of, okay, the environment's indicator right off the bat. But then you, like you said, Hey, w- what's the facility like? What's the wall substrate right. like? And then that's going to really allow us. But, you know, I think what, um, I think the, the, the charge today was to say, you know, seek has got, you know, Sika and us, you know, we, we've, we've been in the wall system business for a long time. Uh, we've been doing this a long time. You know, there's a lot of opportunity out there. I think that we just sometimes not, they're not bad behaviors or bad habits, but they're just, you know, a behavior that yeah, has to be we're changed. looking down. We're not looking up. Right. And it takes yeah. us a lot of times just to recognize, especially we get, you know, so focused in on something that, you know, there's a lot of other opportunity there. And this is not something that is going to take somebody completely outside their wheelhouse. So, well, you know, Ron, we talk about this all the time and, and just not only in our business, but through Sika and, and, you know, the things that we try to, to bring forth to not only to our end users, but our general contractors, our architects, and especially our specialty contractors. But how do you bring the most value to a customer? Right. How do you, how do you provide a single source solution? How do you, how do you pro- be one of those kind of, especially if talking from a contractor, how can you be more on a job than just the flooring guy? Right. You know, you can, you can maybe take responsibility or, for your for the whole area or i mean we always laugh about you know you got to have you know you got to have a lot of tools and how many times do you go out thinking you're going to make a call on something and it's like no we just got our floors done yeah, you know yeah. or there's no issues with our floors yeah. and you think man well i don't have a whole lot to look at and yeah. then so there's there's you know there's other opportunities uh, actually i uh, speaking of that i do have some some people that i work with that 
that for whatever reason they can't seem to do the the floors at a specific uh, pharmaceutical plant but they're always doing the walls right and so it's like well would you rather get something versus nothing right and eventually if you do a lot of uh, my personal opinion is if you're doing the walls really well ultimately you're going to do the floors because the walls kind of drive the space and they drive the the activity in the space and so if you can control the space you're you're going to be you know you're going to be to the good right so. right um and then again you know, i think you know the the you know the talent the skill sets you know equipment uh is is all there to do a wall system right. so i don't think you have to recreate right. your business or i think it's just a recreating and a shift sure um, so, um, again, you know, I, I think what we want to do is, you know, Hey, call us. We'd love to, you yeah. know, provide samples, education, you know, demos, whatever it might be to, to help people get a comfort level to go in and, and make those calls or, or, and have that opportunity to grow their business. Don't in a always way. look down. Right, right. Exactly. Look up, right. look up young man. Yeah. Um, so, um, another couple of things that I want to touch on before we wrap this up uh, real quick is, you know, Sika is, um, is always, you know, trying to evolve as, as a, you know, material new, supplier. New products. New products. We've got a lot of new products. We're going to be, you know, reaching out about doing some testing on a couple of really interesting things that we're excited about. Obviously, you know, we want everybody to, you know, keep aware that we've got a great new code based product that, that we released a couple of months ago. And, and we've just released, um, I guess several months ago, all of our, what we call kind of our SR series products, which is all of our concrete yes. densifiers sealers and sealers. And densifiers, right. Uh, we're having a great, you know, a lot of success there. Uh, we want, I think there's a huge amount of continued success where we're, you know, we're designing and bringing in a lot more products in the coming year. Um, but again, I, I think, you know, we, we want to be, you know, a we, full service flooring right, and wall, right. And wall supplier. Right. So we got a lot of, you know, interesting, uh, stuff coming out. We'll be reaching out to you, but like always, you know, we've got, uh, you, you everybody, you know, we can call us at any time. We'd love to talk. Um, and yeah, I think we'll just, you know, we, we need to give a shout out to the man behind the glass or yep. whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, this is Reed. Our, yeah. Reed Manchester, Reed my brother Manchester. and his younger son or son, uh, has done a great job kind of getting us here, getting us set up. He's the techno master. And, uh, yeah. So we're going to, and with his help, we're going to try to, you know, start coming and making some of this stuff kind of come to life. And, and we're so, going to send some videos out of some floor right. and wall jobs. And I think, uh, you know, show people exactly what you can do and what right. can be done or, and, so, but uh, we're excited. We appreciate everybody uh, being part of the On All Floors family, and we look forward to talking with you and chatting yeah. Uh, soon. Yeah, we got some neat stuff coming up here in the next couple of weeks, so um, make sure you stay tuned.